yep. right? Is that where we're looking, like, hopefully to get to at some point? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, yeah, and so the, um, and this, um, you know, there's, a, there are, um, much like you might ask me, like, hey, how you feeling? You know, and I'd say, great or awesome. Um, but then if you saw me and I was like, you know, totally like fidgeting and agitated and shifting in my seat and like it provides a different um, a different angle on, on what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to come to uh, an understanding of emotions from, from these multiple different angles. Um, and one of which could be a, a physical approach, but um, uh, as a, as a more nuanced way, we're actually finding that, that language analysis can be a more helpful, uh, more helpful in, and also provide some of those same physical metrics. So, so um, I, I, I'm seeing on the site here. So you're actually like w through your system, you can actually analyze emails, uh, text and other social media correspondence, and you're actually kind of getting the mood out of it. Yep. That's right. Interesting. So for instance, the product that we're doing, uh, the product emote that we're doing with, with companies and organizations is, um, it does just that. So it, it pulls in email and then pulls out the different emotional signals from within the correspondence and then provides some sort of higher level metrics around around that to understand things like you know energy levels or uh, social social warmth and agreeableness things like dominance uh, or passivity in people's uh, communications um, yeah so straight, straight, uh, solely from, solely from text. Mm -hmm. that, that's really cool. So, you, so you can pull that from from email and text and, and things like that. Um, where I work, one of the things we work with a lot is is form based response and, and things like that, like a user form where someone posts a question and then a bunch of people chime in, almost like a topic on Facebook or, or something along those lines. Do you have a way to measure? Because because we're, we're where I work. It, we're, we're, we heavily weight engagement and how we can engage employees because um, yeah. it seems like engaged employees are a lot more productive. Um, so exactly. in that, can, can you do the same thing in, in other systems or in like some kind of, I don't want to call it a chat because it's really not, it's really not a live chat, but it's more of a, someone posts a topic or a question or, or whatever in a forum and then other people comment. Um, is there a way to, to kind of gauge that in there too? Or is it just solely, you, you have to take in larger quantities, like an entire conversation in, in a text or an email or something like that? Yeah, no, that's an awesome, awesome question. Yeah, that's, that's what we're, um, one of the cool, when I mentioned with Johannes and, and his work based in, uh, in Twitter, you know, he really um, had cut his teeth on shorter, short form communication uh, you know, tweets, messaging, and um, and in fact, just published a uh, just published a study last month where, um, and you guys might have come across it, but showing that um, Twitter at a at a countywide level, Twitter predicts heart attack deaths um, better than like the traditional risk factors. Wow. Like, yeah, and it was uh, and it was actually the. The what they the signal they found that that predicted that was um, anger, in in particular, sort of high levels of expression, negative emotion, um, and so yeah. So even from these shorter communications, now mind you, it, it's it's not necessarily a going to be a one to one, right? Like um, you get a you get a, a text that said, like I killed it, right? Like that that might register a temporary blip depending upon what you know what version of the software we're using um but uh be, and specifically because it registered this this sort of the word kill which typically will have negative connotations unless it's counterweighted or oh, wow. you know sort of put in context mm -hmm. but yeah that's the kind of that's the kind of thing we're, we're working towards because the um uh 
you know, and the, the architecture of the system will be able to, you know, pulls in regardless of, of source. You, know, you just have the text, um, uh, but um, that you know, we're finding a lot of work in companies happens exactly like you say, John. Like it's happening, you know, it's in the sidebar, right, where, where that the real communications are happening, and you have this nuance of back and forth and response and who's responding and who's not responding and it is that engagement right, that, that like people are realizing is um uh you know that employers are, are um you know look looked at from one way you have employers uh trying to utilize engagement but but i i kind of like i view it from the other side which is that you know employees want to be engaged in their work and often the you know they're they're trying to voice uh, you know emotions often become a way of voicing these concerns at, at times in in structures perhaps or power structures or hierarchies or corporations that that they're not even sure where you know where do you um, uh, you know there's channels for communication right and, and mm-hmm. sometimes emotions are a way of uh, it's like the smoke that will drift across communication lines and often can be a real helpful uh, and effective way of, of, of making one's needs met. Um, and so in a sense, we're kind of like a, um, an emotional smoke detector in some ways, both for mm-hmm. bad and for good, right? And sussing out these hot spots and saying, um, you know, hey, we're not going to, we're not going to tell you, uh, you know, we're not going to tell you that, it's Debbie on Monday here and we're not going to go in and point a finger and say, mm-hmm. you know, Debbie's a real downer. She's pulling down the team. You know, that's not what I set out to do and go into medical school. Yeah. Um, uh, but at the same time, we will provide a more higher level look saying, um, you know, we're not sure what's going on, but, but the smoke detector is kind of going off in this division here. And it appears like, there's some real issues around, you know, power and control. You know, does that, and this week it was here, you know, this week it was a 10, last week it was a 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, on, it's on an upward trend. It's on a downward trend. It's interesting too that you, you can, you can kind of add, I don't know what you, I don't remember what you referred to it as kind of like a score modifier based on the whole, I killed it um, and taking connotation. Cause I, that, that's one thing that I've heard, is big in even I don't want to say surveillance, but it, in in regulated environments like banks, um, mm-hmm. there there's definitely word combinations that then trigger, um, you know, should we investigate this for insider trading or, or, or things of that nature? Um, mm-hmm. So it's really cool how you can how you can do that. Now, do you have ways as maybe some kind of catchphrase catches on can you weight it higher for a period of time and then weight it lower as like the 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 novelty of the phrase potentially wears off or is it something that's more static over time yeah no that's a great question i mean these are all things we're in the process of you know trying to bake in as we're developing the solution um so it's a great question right now that's not baked in uh, but but it it easily could be and it's the kind of thing that like yeah because right because there's a developmental um uh you know there's a, a time course and fluctuation of language gender mm-hmm. differences um and I, I i like that um i'm curious what uh, what you, you mentioned in your workplace what is the, the workplace like what type of environment it's a financial industry yeah so that's what I kind of I kind of know about the regu- a little bit about uh, regulated markets and, and mail. I said I don't want to call it surveillance, but from a mail, like a, a Series Seven trader has to have legally is bound to have their mail um, monitored yeah. for so many years and things of that nature. So that's right. And in, in that case, like there's a lot of there's a lot of work that goes into like what you're talking about in waiting certain phrases and certain words that can then trigger back-end events to make sure that 
a, a bank isn't doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. Uh, not maybe not necessarily the bank, but the employees at the bank. So it, it, yeah. I, it's a different uh, right. It's a different threshold, and in fact, it's it's um, the, there's um, there's two broad areas uh, our company is is focusing in, um, and with sort of different products and different um, uh, levels of granularity, different levels of scrutiny, different levels of um, well, both have the same sort of high level of security, but both. Uh, uh, sort of just different levels of 